Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the Next Gen Podcast, Episode 3. Uh, once again, I'm Brad Starn, and once again, I am uh, taking this on by myself, uh, Sans Jasmine, uh, because I am locked in my home and uh, not able to really go anywhere. Not really locked in my home. I can go somewhere if I need to. Um, but choosing to stay at home, uh, just to, uh, you know, be courteous of those others, uh, especially my parents. Definitely don't want to pick up anything and pass it along to them. Um, so here I am in my house recording audio and video on my computer talking to y'all. And I'm going to say it's a little bit weird again. Got to say it, especially with uh, now kind of adding video to this. And I can see myself, which is also just as strange as talking to yourself. But, anywho, episode three, Next Gen Podcast coming at you. Hopefully this one won't be as long as last week's. Uh, definitely went over on time, uh, which happens. Uh, I can tend to get long-winded, especially when talking about music and Star Wars and Jesus, uh, which is pretty much what this podcast kind of centers around, the whole Jesus thing, and occasionally Star Wars and probably more frequently music. Um, this week we're going to kind of ditch that trident idea and and go more topical uh we'll kind of get into that in a second but just wanted to kind of touch base with you guys uh see how y'all are doing um making sure you guys are all right so if you're watching us on youtube uh please comment down below and and just give us some feedback uh, we will definitely be monitoring that and reaching out to you guys also same as on our instagram page once we post this um, that this is up, please comment to us, direct message us. And of course you guys also know our emails at the church. Mine is Brad S at northsideweb.org and Jasmine's is Jasmine B at northsideweb.org. So please, if you guys need something, please reach out to us. Um, and we can kind of talk there and give you guys cell phone numbers and, and whatnot. Uh, just not going to give that out on something public like this. So please email us, direct message us on Instagram, comment on the YouTubes. There's plenty of ways to get in touch with us if you need something. And, and honestly, we would love to hear from you. Um, just had something rattling around in my head the other day. Uh, I know a lot of you out there are playing Fortnite um, and probably playing more of it than you really want to be. But I uh, thought it might be cool for us to figure out a time to do like a meetup on Fortnite, uh, kind of across all platforms, maybe get some team rumble going and, and just, you know, party up to 16, hang out, uh, be stupid, have some fun. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Would that be something you'd be interested in doing? Uh, if so, please let me know. Um, and, and we'll organize something, put a date, put a time on it, probably off of like Mondays or Wednesdays, um, due to the live feed and the podcast. Um, speaking of the live feed, it kind of got messed up on Monday. I uh, just had some YouTube issues, uh, but I think Jasmine's going to possibly be coming back and trying that on Friday. So um, we'll communicate that when that happens, but potentially be looking for something on Friday to replace that live feed mix up we had on Monday. Yeah. So kind of getting into what I wanted to talk about today is I think something that's critical. We've kind of talked about it the first couple uh, times we've done stuff here um, on the internet, but it, it's also the, the theme of this week's daily studies we've been pushing out there, which is the idea of prayer. Um, I know during this time we can feel lonely. I know I've experienced it myself. Uh, you're just kind of in a house all by yourself and you really don't know where to turn, who to talk to. And it, and it kind of seems like Every person you reach out to doesn't get back quick enough, which, you know, isn't on them. It just is what happens. And and that can lead you down kind of a, a, a dark path, a lonely path, a depressed path, um, a feeling that no one cares path. And, and I really don't want any of you or myself feeling that because that's, that's not truth. That's lies that is in our heads that we are listening to over to God's truth in our lives. And I think one of the ways that we can really help battle that is through prayer. Um, number one, talking to God, um, using prayer to talk to him and to take some of those worries and cares 
and give them to him. Um, same thing as reaching out to our friends that we're close to, reaching out to people we uh, we trust, people who would lead us, um, to number one, be praying for them and also have them praying for us, I think is huge. Um, and so that's why we were kind of focusing on prayer here in our second week of uh, Corona break, if we want to call it that still. Um, but prayer is going to be essential for us. And um, we had made a lesson, oh gosh, I think I was looking at it. It was like seven years ago. Uh, we had a period of two years where we kind of made our own curriculum. And there was a lesson on prayer that actually, uh, for you high schoolers, we were going to actually use last week um, in, on Wednesday nights. So this is going to be something you guys are going to be hearing anyway. And that's kind of where I want to go here in the near future is continue those topics that we had talked about and any middle schoolers who are on this. Um, these are going to be things that can apply to you guys as well. Um, that's kind of why we're focusing on them. But that is number one, the topic of prayer. And I know that prayer for so many people is such a stressful, fearful thing when it shouldn't be. Like I, I know why we get stressed. I know why you get fearful. Um, and if I'm being honest, it's probably because we don't do it a lot. Um, I've always kind of assumed it is that I know that's true for me when I'm nervous about praying in people in front of people. It's, it's not because I, I, it's not because of any kind of fear or anything. It's because I literally don't know how to do it and I don't know what to say. And I think the more real we can be about our insufficiencies, the, the more we can allow Christ to interact into that. And, and to bless it. So, like I said, I just want to start with prayer. And I kind of want to start with those misconceptions we have about it. Um, I believe prayer is a is a kind of a funny thing um, that has gotten so twisted by what it actually is in Scripture. Um, we've kind of gotten this idea that prayer is kind of this just like genie wish list, right? That um, and, uh, instead of three wishes that we get from a genie, we have infinite wishes we get from God. And, and we can just like work on and pray for these things and throw them out there, which ends up leaving us disappointed, right? Um, I'm sure you guys have seen it already. There's like these memes of of a famous televangelist, like, you know, condemning the coronavirus and condemning Satan. And he's like praying it out that God would remove it. Now, do I believe that if we pray to God to do something miraculous, he can do it? Yes, absolutely. But I also have to come to that with realistic expectations of where God's going to choose to interact with here in this world. And that's why I say prayer can be such a funny thing. Because prayer talks about, you know, if we if we pray with everything we have and we're sincere about it, we're asking about it from God, that he will give it to us, right? And then we have these moments where we pray for our grandmother, when we pray for our friend who has cancer, when we pray, pray for whatever it is and it doesn't happen, um, that hurts and that crushes us. And we're like, God, why didn't you answer my prayer? And I think that's where the the big thing about prayer comes in. Um, why are we praying is critical to how we pray. Are we praying to get what we want or are we praying to communicate with God to have that lifeline that, that can happen? Cause you know, I think one of the things we have to realize is that when it comes to prayer, we have to remove what we want out of the equation. Like prayer isn't about getting what we want, whether that's a relationship or whether that's money or whether it's a job or whether it's an A on a test. Yeah, those would all be great things. But how we approach that and the ways that we approach that are really, really tough. And, and I, you guys catch that I'm kind of like struggling over words here. It's because prayer is like one of the most difficult things sometimes in scripture to understand because we bring so much of what our world and what our culture has taught us about prayer into the scripture we read about prayer, right? Hey, if you ask whatever you, whatever you desire and your, your intentions are great, then God will give it to you. That's not saying, man, if I just, man, if I just really need a really awesome car, right? 
and I wanted I want an awesome car for ministry, then God's just going to give me this amazing car, right? I want to use it for ministry. I want this amazing house so I can do ministry. So I'm going to pray for this amazing house. I don't know necessarily if God's going to give me that. Now, if I'm praying for the courage to do awesome ministry. Now, if I'm praying for the opportunities that ministry might happen, then I do it. And God will try to work through that. Um, I hope this is really making sense because I really want to set up this idea of where our ideas of prayer go wrong and what a true idea of prayer in scripture is. So let me turn to scripture here. I have something pulled up here on my computer. And and here's the first scripture we come across. It's Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 6. And it says, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And this is kind of talking about the heart to which we bring to prayer. Um, We don't pray because it's the cool thing to do. We don't pray because it makes us look good. We don't pray because others pray. We pray because that is our desire to do it for God. It is our desire to communicate with him, to be in a relationship with him, to talk to him. Those are the reasons why we do it. We don't do it like the hypocrites who mess it all up. We do it like Jesus did and and like how Christians are supposed to do, which is bringing it in the right way, bringing it to God. It's not about anyone else. It's about us and God in that idea of prayer. And then we get another um, we get this other example, which I think is awesome, which we're just going to kind of break down. And that, and that's of course the example of the Lord's prayer. And that's in Matthew chapter six, verses nine through 15. And it says this, and, and I would encourage you guys pull out your Bibles, find this bookmark it, um, take some notes, whether it's from this podcast or, or just by doing your own study around Matthew five and six. Um, but I encourage you guys to actually like m- make this podcast something physical that you're doing. Um, so Matthew 6, 9 through 15 says this. Pray like this then. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others' trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay? And so what this is, is Jesus breaking down literally how we should pray. And, you know, we kind of have these stanzas in this that you've probably memorized this at some point or heard it at some point. Um but this is the example in which we are supposed to pray. Um, we always look for things in scripture. We're like, man, God, what is the example for this? What should I be doing about this? And we often don't find good examples. And so we're like, okay, we have to look at other scriptures and find them out. What prayer, the thing that we probably butcher the most is literally written out exactly in scripture, how we should do it. And yet we ignore it, um, which is just very funny to me, but So there's a very simple method that I've used for a long time and um, it directly comes from this that I just kind of want to go over with you guys really quick. And that is the ACTS method for prayer. All right. And ACTS method stands for these four things. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. So ACTS, A-C-T-S, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Now, adoration. What does adoration mean? It kind of, uh, uh, what would you say? Like a, a normal way of saying adoration would be like, tell God what you think about him. And, and the positive stuff, right? Uh, if we're in a good standing with God, we're not going to be like, God, you're the worst. All right. It's, it's this positive stuff. 
And it starts with this idea of pray then like this, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All right. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We start from this place of who we believe God is and what we want to start seeing him do. All right. We're adoring him. We're, we're giving him praise. We're worshiping him. If we're leaving this out of our prayers, we're starting in the wrong place. Like, think about this in a relationship. If you had a friend that always came to you and only ever asked you for what they wanted from you, how long would they be your friend? Like, literally, how long would they be your friend? They wouldn't. You would start to get really tired of them always just wanting something from you, but never building you up, never giving you a compliment. Never, never really making it a two-way conversation at all. Just one way. Just what can you get from me? And that's, I think, where we start off on the wrong foot in prayer. We need to start in this place of adoring God, giving him the praise, giving him the worship that he deserves. And that and that sets off what's going to come next on the right foot. So number two is confession, which is exactly what, what it makes what it uh what makes sense for this confessing just kind of saying what what we've done wrong what do we need to tell god is how i would say it in layman's terms like if we're going to start with what do we think of god what do i need to tell god right what do i need to tell god forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil like, what are the things in our life that we need to confess? Like, I'm pretty sure if you're like me, there's something every single day that you need to confess. Right? There, there's something that you need to take to God and be like, God, I messed up here. Whether it's right now in this season, whether it's being frustrated with people, whether it's not doing what we should be doing, um, whether it's getting angry or just not taking things to him. Like that's the stuff we need to be giving up and say, God, forgive me of this. I'm sorry this is happening. Help me with it. So adoration, confession, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is just all that, all that good stuff, right? What are we thankful for? Okay. You know, this is the idea. Give us this day, our daily bread. Like right now, like, I've been going to the store like maybe once a week and it's crazy at the stores. I was just talking to my mom and dad and they were saying they went in that early part of the morning um, where people that are a high risk, um, they're, they're both in their sixties. So people that are at high risk can go early and, and avoid. And they're like, everyone's idiots. They're like all hacking on each other. They all want to talk. They're just dumb. So, what are the things that we can be thankful for? We're thankful that there's a roof over my head. I'm thankful that I have good health. I'm thankful that all the people I care for, who I'm close with, all have good health. Um, what What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for I have internet. And because I have internet, I'm able to actually converse with people still. Whether that's through video games or, or through meetings here on the internet or recording this. Um, sending text messages, um, sharing dumb memes on Instagram, sending Snapchats, whatever it might be. I am thankful for the internet because if I didn't have it, I would be going berserk, like literally going berserk. So adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and then finally supplication. And that's this idea to bring requests for everyone else and for things in our lives to God. Notice how that's the third thing. We have to adore God. We need to confess to God. We need to thank God. And in the last piece of this, we can start asking for things. This is for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And so this also talks a little about the debts. And this also talks about the debtors. There's stuff all over this about praying for things outside of our control. That would be what the S is. Supplication. Our requests. 
What do we need to pray to God about? And this isn't like, God, I want a new car. God, I want a new house. God, I want this virus to instantly disappear. Odds are it's probably not going to. Could God do it? Absolutely. But for whatever reason, that might not be happening, right? So supplication, we need to give things up to God. Ask him, ask him, ask, 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 ask. That's all he asks for us. Communicate with me. Don't be ridiculous, but communicate with me. And so that, that is the core part of prayer, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. And then another part in this is as idea of there's one word in here that I love, and it's about the bread daily. There's not only just this ax thing, but it's also consistency. Like we have to consistently be praying, consistently be praying to God that we need to be constantly bringing these things to him. Just like in any relationship, we want to have that constant contact. We want to have those constant things that are always coming in, always circling around each other, constant contact. It's what we're all looking for. It's what God desires as well. So just really, really quick, really quick recapping acts, right? Acts method of prayer. If you get nothing else but these things today, I want you to hear these things. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And I encourage you guys as we kind of wrap up this podcast, I encourage you right now, do it. Do it. Do it like literally right now. Pray. When this, As soon as this fades out, take acts and pray. All right? Guys, we thank you so much um, for tuning in on this. I, I, sorry that I'm like, my eyes are kind of like looking everywhere. I don't know where to look when I'm doing a video. But my prayer is that this in some way helps you. Um, just as, again, like I said, we go through this rough time. So guys, we love y'all. We hope you guys are doing well. Please, if you need to talk to any of us, any of us, any of our volunteers, any of any of your leaders, please reach out to them. Please reach out to friends. Um, anything we can do to help, we are willing to do. Um, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Have an awesome week. And uh, talk to you later. Bye.